coffee as you guys saw so we're gonna go to a coffee shop right now i actually want to go there and sit on my laptop so that's what we're doing today you already know that i love a good cafe sit there's a lot of things in my brain that i kind of want to organize so i kind of need to put pen to paper and by pen to paper i mean keyboard to notion uh, like all my personal admin my creative stuff the weekend is really the only time that i get to do that because during the week, I'm obviously doing my nine to five. So this is really my me time. It's my favorite time. It is a Saturday, so we're starting the vlog off on the weekend. And yeah, it's time to get out of the house, especially after working at home all week. So let's go. last week's vlog you would have seen what that's all about but this weekend is actually the last weekend that it's on because that festival's on for like a whole a whole month so we're gonna go with the family i'm taking mom and dad and i think we're gonna meet my brother and my niece there as for shoes i want to wear these clogs that i got from korea mm -hmm. We're back. It is so busy again. <laughs> My dad. A hey, little bonus trick up the turn around in a circle. Okay. Uh, how much crowd went to Ohio? This way. This street is full with people, and we're gonna get some pizza in this alleyway. Nice. Some wood oven pizza, not the flies, it's so easy. Pilates session book today. This is my first time doing Pilates here in Adelaide and I got an introductory class. It was like five for fifty dollars which is so affordable um, considering how expensive Pilates is but we're gonna try it out. This is what I used to do in Sydney. I used to sign up to like a bunch of introductory classes and then the classes ended up being super affordable so that's just like a little hack. This is the Pilates fit. I wear this all the time. The top and bottom I took up for me for running purposes and then I just chucked on the black shawl. I think that's what it's called, um, just to make it look a little bit more Pilates. So, yes. 
난 취한 것 같아 자꾸만 웃음이 나 어린아이 장난 같아 Well done, I forgot how hard Pilates was. We spent the day, we went to church, had lunch, and now we're just having some dinner. My parents made some food and we're just eating it. Oh, it's dark in here. All we do is watch friends. I'm so excited because today is a co-working day. It's a work from home day with one of my bestest, longest friends. I've known Josie for literally like 24 years, I want to say. And she actually moved to Melbourne. So I haven't seen her in such a long time. She's in town and we were like, let's catch up. But our schedules didn't match. And so we were like, why not have a little work from home day? Because we both work from home. I've always wanted to do this. Like put me in a co-working space and I'm so happy. But I also just made us a little morning, you know, drink. Some frozen berries in there with some coconut water. And I also just added some milk. So yes, let's start work. <laughs> work hello hello I thought this would be a good segue into a conversation about what I do for work and really a bigger conversation about careers because I've mentioned before how I have a law degree but I intentionally chose not to be a lawyer this topic of conversation is like a huge testimony for me I had a revelation earlier in my adulthood which essentially shaped the way that I view careers and shaped my values and so to me it's a much bigger picture than any specific job it's a lot to do with lifestyle and so 
let's talk about it but to do so we kind of have to take it all the way back to uni high school days to give a bit of context so this will be a long story time I'm so sorry if you're not interested please feel free to skip right through I get sick of my own voice trust me but long story short if you're going through career change or if you're going through career confusion just know that you are not alone it's okay please do what makes you happy um, the way that I view it it's kind of morbid, I'm sorry, but I look at it from the perspective of if I was at the end of my life and I was to look back, what was it that truly made me happy? And I kind of go from there. So it gets very deep, but that's the gist of, I guess, this story time. We're going to take it back to high school. From the get-go, I was already confused. We're starting there. But in high school, I was very studious. I got pretty good grades. Um, my siblings set that example for me and I think a lot of the motivation comes from the fact that we're children of first generation immigrants. Our parents are the hardest working people that we know. We really understood the sacrifice they would have made to come to Australia to give their kids greener pastures and so that was the influence growing up and the influence throughout high school. And in year 12 I ended being ducks of the school and I also got a high you know, admission rank to get into uni. So as you can imagine the pressure was on. But naturally being 17 and barely knowing myself I had no idea what I wanted to study. I wish throughout my high school years that I honed in more on my hobbies and did more extracurricular activities because maybe, just maybe, I would have found something I was so passionate about that would have made the career decision process a little bit easier. I also wasn't exposed to many different career paths so I only really knew the usual like doctor, lawyer, teacher, nurse. Had I known for example, I could have been a commercial pilot because I love traveling or I could have been in TV production because I love film. I'm sure I would have eaten that up, but that's obviously not how my story goes. And so going into uni, we're now, you know, talking about uni days. Going into uni, I actually chose teaching. Side note, I would have loved to be a teacher. What an awesome job. It's unfortunate I didn't go that way. But yeah, it just wasn't for me. I wasn't even set on it at the time anyways. And in the back of my mind, unfortunately, I was putting pressure on myself to study something that required a higher threshold since I did get a high ATAR, a high admission rank, because I honestly thought that's what would have been expected of me. So it was kind of a fear of what other people would think if I didn't get into a super prestigious career. And so after after a year I ended up transferring into law. I actually tried to transfer in my first day of uni um, but I couldn't transfer until a year later. So Second year of uni that's when I became a law student. Now studying law was my thing. I loved it. So I have no regrets about that at all but one thing about the law it is a highly competitive industry and so very early on you're likely wanting to get some experience on your resume. I was constantly comparing myself to the other students because their experience was already you know stacking up and so I was like oh my gosh I need to keep up I need to get a job. I started the job hunting process but this is where it all started to change. This was a very confronting process for me and it's when I realized I actually don't think I'm that much of a highly ambitious big shot person and there was this one time after an interview that I remember so vividly I remember walking out out of that interview getting tunnel vision having heart palpitations and just feeling anxious and it was the very first time that I had knowingly and could pinpoint well Adele you are currently experiencing anxiety and it was very new to me I was just battling a lot internally like more than I can explain but I don't know if I actually want to be a lawyer I was just doing it to tick a box I was tying my identity to whether or not I did get the job and if I didn't I wasn't worthy which I know is so wrong I just knew it was only gonna get worse from there because if I was thinking this way over just an office law clerk position then just imagine me years down the line when I'm actually applying for those you know high pressure lawyer jobs. So it kind of brought up that conversation of do we live to work versus work to live. Now I do want to stress that it has nothing to do with the job or with the law and it has everything to do with me as a person. If you're a lawyer you're amazing. I wish I just I was trying to be something that I wasn't. I know I wouldn't have been happy as a lawyer but I remember coming home after that interview walking straight into my sister Alice's room and asking her to pray for me it was the first time I ever asked her to pray for me and when she did that I was bawling my eyes out I was so confused it's like I was giving myself permission to unlearn everything that I thought I knew as you can see this is why this was such a pivotal moment in my life but I'm telling you it was not an overnight thing this was me over years and so that brings me to the fact that plot twist I ended up getting that job ironically from that interview and so for the next five years I actually worked in this commercial commercial law firm. But this was a blessing because not only was I now learning what I really wanted and what I really valued, but I was also gaining first-hand experience in the industry, which made the
the decision of not becoming a lawyer a lot easier. Um, I ended up transferring into a double degree in law and commerce. So I went from teaching to law to then moving into law and commerce, majoring in management so that I could broaden my options when I did get out of uni for obvious reasons. But I was persistent and one thing my parents taught me is that we are hardworking. So I continued my degree, I completed that and I continued working. And I finally, over many years, got to a point where I was so content with my decision not to become a lawyer that no one and nothing could tell me otherwise. I knew myself, I did the inner work and so I was really confident about it. And this boldness actually opened doors for me. I would have conversations towards the end of my degree with some principals at work and they would ask me, you know, what is in my plan? And I would just confidently tell them how I wasn't interested in becoming a lawyer. And one of these conversations actually led to you know, them giving me a completely new role that the company opened up and that's how straight out of uni I got into a business development role. Now this job was the best, it was like the best of both worlds because I was still in the legal industry, it wasn't too far off. I had a lot of flexibility because I was kind of like my own boss, I was my own team. I learned that I really enjoyed being in support roles as opposed to technical roles so it taught me that and it just also showed me that I could make a living without being a lawyer. And so the conclusion that I reached, because you're probably asking okay you didn't want to be a lawyer what is it that you wanted to be and the answer is it is not job specific I am happy as long as I can achieve a certain lifestyle so over the years I learned that I no longer valued like a title or a status I really just valued you know time you know work-life balance flexibility I valued a not so stressful job that would allow me to explore my interests mm -hmm. and my creativity if not at work then at least outside of work if I can't make a living doing something that I love then I at least would want to strive for a work-life balance where I didn't have to sacrifice you know that part of me that kind of mindset was really the outcome which leads me finally to the question of girl what do you do for work I did end up quitting that business development role because I moved to Sydney naturally where my resume takes me is the legal industry because that's my work experience and so currently I'm working as a legal secretary for a law firm and having moved back to Adelaide I work permanently from home so I'm actually living that you know flexible work life balanced type of role that I always wanted and sometimes I have to pinch myself and be like girl you literally dreamt about this and so I'm really happy I get to do my job I'll always honor any job that I'm in but as soon as I clock off at 5 p.m I can still you know make my little videos and do things on the side and work-life balance is just top tier and so that is me. I feel like that's super anticlimactic to end on, to like go through all of that and then be like, this is my role. But I'm really content and I think that's the real message here. We'll see where the next few years takes me. I could be in this role, I could be in another role. I'll do anything as long as I can achieve, you know, that lifestyle. We're forever changing and so... I'm sure in 10 years down the line, I'll have another story to tell. I hope I didn't encourage anyone in the wrong way. I just wanted to share my story and just let you know that if you are confused, it's a universal experience, I'm sure. You got this, there's no rules, we're always learning. But yes, did you hear my elbow crack? That hurt so much. I have my notes here as well. Did I miss anything? I have to write notes down when I like have big conversations because I'm not one who's very good at talking out of my butt. There's a structure in my head that I have to follow. Um, but yes, I think I'm gonna make myself a tea.